Hi, I'm Thomas Bowles, Prince William County Agricultural Extension Agent. Welcome to our video. Good morning, everybody. Today's um, garden goodies, some of our favorite things, is given by Master Gardener Jan Rice, um, and I will let her start. Okay, I have a couple of minutes before 11, so I'll just talk for a few minutes and um, to let the last people join us. So welcome to our Garden Goodies presentation. These are gift ideas, both practical and decorative, that we thought our fellow gardeners would enjoy either as a gift or as a treat to yourself. We've, I've divided it into several different groups and I hope that you'll find something here to entertain or to enjoy. So I'm going to give it these couple of minutes for the la for last few people to join. I've I've got three minutes to eleven, and um, hope you find this entertaining. Well, we're at it. I'd like to mention that next week on December fifteenth at eleven a.m. we have a Zoom class on winter sowing, on starting uh, seeds early. They can stay outside and. Um, gallon milk jugs and other things and we'll be discussing that is very popular zoom class and it starts at 11 and you can i'll be advertising on facebook on my usual spots at teaching garden and also uh, vce master gardeners where you can register there or you can register at master gardener um at the master gardener let me, I'm going to pull it up here to give you all the it's, I've got Robin, it will be at the end of the presentation and okay. I put it on the sheet. I want to tell everybody today that you do not have to copy down um, the ideas from here because you're going to get a, uh, a email which is going to have links to all of these items that are mentioned. Um, it will also give you our Master Gardener website and our master gardener emails so that if you want to contact us you can do so thank you jan i know i i taking notes was a skill that i left behind a long time ago so taking notes on these kind of things i like to just listen enjoy and you can also um if somebody misses this you can rewatch it because it will be posted so for instance if you have to leave early and you'd like to finish watching it it will be posted on our video, um, our YouTube video channel. Just based on the list that you've given us, I, I think it's fabulous already. <laughs> Thank you, Mickey. <laughs> Just a reminder, to save bandwidth, it would be helpful if you turned off uh, your cameras and kept your microphones on mute. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Linda. Okay, I have almost 11. <laughs> there you go. It's 11. All right. So welcome, everybody. Um, all right. I'm trying to move forward. Ah, there we go. So we have a disclaimer here. Brand names in this presentation are for illustrative purposes only. And it doesn't constitute an endorsement of any brand or company by Virginia Cooperative Extension, Virginia State University, or Virginia Tech. All of these ideas came from fellow master gardeners or garden blogs, and many of these items can be found at various outlets, garden centers, box stores, or online. If you haven't already gotten them, you will be getting a set of links so that you don't have to take notes, you don't have to... Um, you don't have to write them all down. Um, some of the links are for the original manufacturers. Others will just be general, depending on what it is. And I always remind everyone when you're purchasing anything like this to check prices, because when I did exploration, I found that the prices varied greatly. So I've broken this program down into six sections. One is handy tools and other things you didn't know you needed. Um, gardening at any age. I'm getting to that age where gardening needs, I need a little help. And must have garden fashions, gift ideas, books and games, and gardens to visit. So the first section is handy tools and other things you didn't know you needed. 
The thing I want to emphasize about tools is quality over quantity. I know every gardener ever was has bought a cheap tool and lived to regret it. So a hoary knife is a very, very useful tool, especially for vegetable gardeners. It's both a knife, it's a shovel, it's anything. This particular one is made by A.M. Leonard Company, but there are many, many varieties out there. The one thing you want to look for in your hoary knife is, does the metal in the blade extend up through the handle? If its handle is separate and just attached, you will find it will break. And the cheaper ones are made that way to save money. The Cobra is, I think, the Prince William Master Gardener's favorite everything. Everybody in the teaching garden has one. And that's why I included the battered one in the corner, which is mine. And I highly recommend using electrical tape. And you can do that on any of your tools. But if you use a bright color, it allows you to find it in the weeds. Not that anybody has weeds in their garden, mind you. But if you did. And it will also allow you to identify yours from everybody else. So if you have different colors, that makes it easy. And the Cobra, I should have said the Cobra comes in two sizes. You can get it in long or short handle version. This interesting looking weeder on the left, what makes it unique is that scoop of metal that is under the main part of the weeder. And it allows you leverage. So you're not using your arm weight, you're just prying that out using that leverage. This particular one is made by Kate's Garden, but there are many varieties out there you can find. The Yard Butler Terra Planter. When I went to Yard Butler, this was a Master Gardener recommendation. I found that it was sold in sets, but you can buy it individually in other places. I found it individually on Amazon. It's kind of cool because it's got the two different sides, like, like a hoe. The Japanese weeding sickle, this particular one is, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, tamari. And this is a 17-inch long handled one. Very, very sharp. But you can get them with different handle lengths at different manufacturers. If you just look up Japanese weeding sickle, you will find a variety. I particularly love the Tierra Garden Trake because it's sort of like the spork of garden tools. It's a fork and a spoon all mixed together. Um, I, I thought that this one was a lot of fun. The spearhead shovel. Now everyone has shovels. Why do you need another shovel? This particular shovel has very sharp edges and its arrow shape makes it a lot easier to dig. This purple one is from the teaching garden, and, but it comes with longer handles. It comes in different colors and it's very, very useful for digging and the shape of it makes it easy, easy digging. The weasel garden claw is an interesting little creation. Uh, if you're just weeding small patches, it's it, fork goes in, you twist it and the weed comes right out. So a very useful tool if you do a lot of weeding. Mentioning solid tools, this company, the DeVitt company, has been making tools since 1898 in Holland. Very, very well recommended in the gardening world. This particular one is the spork. Again, I find that very funny, the mixture of a shovel and a fork. And this is one has a solid socket handle so that it's very, very sturdy. You can also get simpler gardener to garden tools from Devet as well. And this is their USA site, but they have sites around the world. This Silky Zubat professional hand or pole saw. Those of you who have worn out hand saws know how the cheap ones just don't last. This one is a professional one. And this is the short version, but you can also get it on a pole, in a pole version. And it's a very long lasting, very sharp tool. Loppers, you can get loppers in all different shapes and sizes. I prefer ones that have the um, telescoping handles because I'm fairly short. So reaching upwards and this, I can adjust the size. These particular ones are Wolfgarten ones. Uh, they're made in Germany, but you can find them 
you can find all different kinds. The thing to look for is the replaceable blades because they do get dull very, very quickly. So smaller tools, the Felco makes very good pruners. You can also get a little pocket there. So if you want to hang it off your belt and so you don't lose them, uh, you can get them in smaller versions of snips. And then this is the F2, but it goes up to the F15. And what you want to do is read about the different types so that you get one that fits you and fits what you're what you're going to prune. They're ones that prune just very small things. And then I think it goes up to two inches that the very large ones will do. And keeping those tools sharp, um, I mentioned replaceable blades, but in between you do want to keep them sharp. This is a Falco sharpener and then a Corona sharpener. The Corona one is very inexpensive and it's just a handy thing to keep in your tool bag to kind of sharpen, on the go, sharpen it on the go. Well, now that you have all those tools, what are you going to do with them? Uh, you can use something very simple, like these plastic trugs that a couple of the teaching garden master gardeners are fond of. And this is a garden tool bag one of our master gardeners had out of the garden one day. So you can get the very fancy ones. The one sort of in the middle is a bit fancy. Or if you like to hang them around your waist, you can get a apron, a tool belt. And the dovetail workwear one is designed for gardeners or um, people who are doing uh, construction work, but very tough. They, and if you just look up garden tool aprons, you'll find a, a rainbow of colors and types. Now, gardening at any age, I'm at that age where I need additional help. I do want to bring your attention to this wonderful gentleman on the right. I was recently in California. He was a, an artist had created him. He was not for sale. If he had been, I would have bought him an airplane ticket and brought him home with me. I just love him. So the first handy tool for anybody is a cart. These are examples of different types of carts. The one on the left, the folded marine cart is wonderful because if you have limited space for storage, this folds flat. I have the one in the middle, the one at the top that's canvas that also collapses. It's very easy to store in your car if you're going to the garden center or if you're like me going to the teaching garden and you want something to haul your tools up the hill with, that's these folding carts and they come in various sizes and shapes. On the right is an interesting one. Um, interesting one because the sides come off and it's flat. So you can, if this has a canvas center, you can take that out and you can haul very large things. And the Gorilla Cart is just a um, composite version that's very lightweight, but it isn't collapsible and it doesn't fold. You want to take into account what you're trying to move and the weight of the things you're trying to move. So the garden scooter is a handy dandy little thing. If you have a bigger garden and you want to scoot around this particular version, I liked it because of the color. It has baskets for tools and extended steering arm, et cetera, et cetera. But they come in various shapes, sizes, and colors. If you just look up garden scooter, you'll find a variety. And a kneeling pad is an essential tool. Uh, this, the one in the center, it flips over so you can kneel on it or you can use it as a chair. The little camp stool one has pockets for your tools and places for your gloves. Again, looking up kneeling pads or garden stools, you will find many, many different varieties. Um, if you're like me and you have some gigantic pots, pot lifters are an essential help. Uh, the one on the far left allows an individual to lift a very heavy pot, you slide it under, you clamp it on, and then you can wheel your pots to another area of your yard or your deck. Um, the one with the two people holding it, that's a much lighter, easy to store one, but it does require two people to use. I have 
my plants now on plant caddies. They come in different sizes, shapes. You can get inexpensive plastic ones like the orange plastic one, or they're expandable, so they fit different size pots, or you have ones with locking wheels like in the corner, or you have fancy metal ones like that one with the anthurium on it. So all kinds of caddies, but it does make it very easy. And I can say this because right now, painters are working in my house and my big plants, I had to move. It was tough. So sometimes you're in a position where you're gardening and getting outside is hard for you for whatever reason and you want to grow some veggies. There are wonderful indoor garden um, this particular one is from Rise Gardens. It, I put in the picture of the individual shelf, but you can get them that three, four, five shelves in them. You can, these you can put anywhere because they have lights to help them grow. You have to remember wherever you're gardening, you do need that essential light, especially for any kind of vegetables. Or you can choose, if you want a smaller space, there are hydroponic towers. This one's five foot tall, but it comes with varying levels. <clears throat> I think the lowest level on this one was like three and a half, four feet. Of course, the taller it is, the more plants you can grow. But it's a great way to grow um, fresh greens. At my grandchildren's school, they have a big one in their lobby growing fresh greens that they use in their kitchen. You can build your own. Oklahoma State has a fact sheet on how to build one using a fence post, a, a big fence post, obviously, a plastic core one. So if you're into that, you can always do your own. Now, composting requires a lot of effort. If you have a big compost outside, then you've got to keep that going. If you don't have the space or you don't have the energy to do Big composting, you can do a minor version, requires worms. And I loved, I found this purple one. I thought it was very elegant. It could fit in your dining room and nobody would know you had worms right there. But you can have a much simpler version to, that you want to hide away in your basement. These are just two versions. If you look up vermicomposting, you will find a wide variety out there. But the simplest thing is to make your own. You just get a few plastic buckets, punch a few holes, um, get your worms and dirt, and you're ready to go. You can find videos online, and then the EPA has a how to create and maintain a vermicomposting bin. So fashions. All right, I know these are the ladies' things. I do have something in here for the men as well. But the fun thing about gardening, the newest gardening, um, gear is the colors. Uh, the Berkey is old and, uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say old, has been around a long time. It's venerable. It comes in a lot of different colors. Sloggers, I love my sloggers so much. I could wear them every day if I wanted to. They have the most amazing <laughs> designs. This particular one is flying pigs and goats, but also has more conservative flower ones. They are incredibly comfortable and washable. So muck boots are another version, uh, guys or ladies. My husband's had his forever. They don't look anything near as pristine as this lovely pair but they are very hard wearing. And the jewels are another uh, beautiful gardening boot. This is one of our master gardeners in her garden bed. And they come in three different heights. You can get the really tall knee high ones. You can get the mini ones or the mid calf length. Lots of different colors. So hats essential. I didn't go into too much on hats, but I wanted to recommend hats that have the shield the sun shield for your neck which also protects from the insects and you can get these at any sporting goods stores in the spring i found them in costco they come in different designs ball cap more decorative bright colors or just your standard garden things and insect shield clothing is becoming a very useful thing this year in the teaching garden we had so much problem with oak mites and several of the master gardeners found these were very handy to have these long sleeve 
shirts that protect them from bug bites. And then if you do get a bug bite, this is a silly looking little thing. I had to add it just for fun. It's called the bug bite thing. And believe it or not, it was, it's the one thing that I found that relieves the itching from chiggers. Nothing really solves your chigger problem, but this relieves it a lot. And you can use it on children. It's just a little plastic tube that suctions. So a gardener friend recommended these, these fox gloves. They are interesting. They come in different lengths and sizes. You can get them that are heavy duty for thorny plants or you can get the more elegant kinds. I personally um, love the purple ones. Don't forget something as simple as white cotton glove liners. These are very cheap. You can get packs of a dozen. If your hands tend to get sweaty inside your gloves, this cotton absorbs that. It also, when the dirt tends to filter through some gloves, it can protect your hands a little bit more and they're very inexpensive. I had to throw in jewelry because I am to like bug and be jewelry myself. But Louis Ginter, which is um, very near Richmond, it's a garden, I'll mention it again later. They have a gift shop that has a wonderful array of butterfly wings and beads. They have a butterfly garden and they collect the wings and they encase them in a kind of plastic and they're great fun. But you can also go a lot of other places. And if you just search nature jewelry, you will find an amazing array. So gift ideas. Again, this one thing on the right, I'm waiting for somebody to build that this for me. I saw this in a garden center in Cambria, California. I fell in love with it. I so want to go and read there, but I don't personally know anyone who's willing to build it for me. So we'll move on to other ideas. So garden signs, you can find these if you just Google garden signs, you find them with poetry, with funny sayings, trespassers will be composted, it's my personal favorite. Not that I really care about trespassers, but I enjoy the sign. Now the one in the middle was made by a friend of mine. She took a wooden cabinet door and she painted it. Then she got the letters, her grandson calls her Moo. So she, this is Moo's garden and she hot glued these wooden letters after she painted them to, to her door and then covered it with layers of clear coating and it's lasted four years now. So seeds, we don't usually think of seeds as a gift, but if you buy a lot of seeds, you'll know that can be an expensive thing. So there's some good seed companies out there, many more than I'm gonna to mention today. Southern Exposure Seed Exchange is Ira Wallace's and she has books on gardening and especially in Virginia. Now I know some of you are not from Virginia, but there are other books probably for the area that you're in. And she has a wide variety. All of these are organic seeds. A couple of other organic seed companies, uh, John Shepherd's Kitchen Guard Seeds and Johnny's Organic. And then Botanical Interest has these gift boxes of seeds. I'm right now I'm really focusing on that microgreen sampler looked awfully good to me. Plant markers. Plant markers can be as simple as a popsicle stick stuck in the ground, or you can get creative. The pottery one, the Lady Lavender one was done by one of our master gardeners. He has his own pottery studio. And if you don't have access to that, that may be a little bit hard, but I know there are a lot of do-it-yourself pottery places that you could probably get something and paint it and have it fired. Painted stones, if you have children or grandchildren who are looking for a fun project, this is a very simple one that's painted white with the name of the patio peach tree on it in the teaching garden, but you can do them as fancy or as plain as you like. And the golf tees with the marbles, I was fascinated by this. Somebody recommended, so when you plant your bulbs and you can't remember where you've planted them, if you have old marbles sitting around and glue them to some cheap golf tees, and then when you plant a bulb, stick one of these in, and it doesn't tell you what kind of bulb, but you do know that that's where your bulbs are planted. And then there's earth-friendly biomarkers. These are ones that are for sale, and they're made of recycled plastic, and you can write on them. 
So feeding the birds. This is one of my weaknesses. I probably spent more on bird feeders than I have spent on anything else in my life. But they come in, again, all varieties. And I am going to say this. Don't listen to any that say they're squirrel proof. I have yet to find one that's totally squirrel proof, no matter what they say. So this tube feeders, you want to look up the kind of birds that you want to attract and what type of feeders they prefer. So if it's a ground feeding bird, they may want something flat like this tray feeder. Some birds prefer peanuts. Check your local bird feeder stores. Shop local, everyone, uh, because I live near, I live in Prince William County. So this one in Woodbridge at the Wild Bird Center is one. And in Gainesville, there's Wild Birds Unlimited. And another type of feeder is for Niger seed. But I'm going to warn you, I've used Niger seed in the past, and then I have thistles everywhere because Niger is just another word for thistle seed. The fruit one is for Orioles. They love fruit, so you can put that out. And then, of course, the feeders who love, the birds who love the sugar water. But I've discovered since I planted my coral honeysuckle, the honey hummingbirds are not at all interested in the hummingbird feeder. They much prefer the coral honeysuckle. So if you live where that will grow, it's a great thing for birds. Another type of feeder is a mealworm feeder. You want to have a little cup protected um, so that you can put that you can put mealworms in. Suet feeders. This is a fancy one with a tail support on it for those birds who like tail supported. And another way is a log. This one is a commercial one, but you could buy, I'm sorry, you can just take an old log and you can bore holes in it and hang it up and then put peanut butter and seeds in it. So another place you can find them is Nature's Way Birds. And if you get feeders, and especially if you give it as a gift, make sure you give it to somebody who's going to take care of it. Bird feeders don't take care of themselves. You have to clean them. And also don't forget that your birds need water. And in the winter, you might want to put something in to keep the water circulating so it doesn't freeze. Bird houses. Again, do your, do your research first. So bluebirds like a specific type of nest with a certain hole. I found this picture of a commercially made one, but it doesn't have the snake guards on it. So if you, even if you get a commercially made one, you're going to want to put the snake guards in. Snakes just love bluebird babies or any bird babies. And you can find the Audubon has how to make your own if you're, if you want to do it that way. So the, here again, this is the comparison, what type of bird feeder for what type of bird. Purple martins like to nest together traveling flocks. So you want one that has several holes. And this is just a picture of someone making one out of a gourd. And if you did this, you would want to have several gourds so that they're grouped and have them grouped together. So be sure the type of bird you want to attract and make sure that you have the correct environment for them. So now that you have all these gifts, you might want some note cards to thank people with. And these are a couple of places you can find some very attractive um, flower themed or bird themed current catalog and botanical interests are a couple of places you can find them. I'm particularly fond of things made of flower pots and they abound. I picked two of them. The flower pot wreath is one. It's very, very simple to make with great fine wreath and some little pots. And then you can decorate it any way you want. And the flower pot snowman, I absolutely love. These are a couple of different versions. If you, if you search online for things to make with flower pots, you, there's everything. There's everything from scarecrows to Halloween things. Now, wind chimes, if you're making a gift to somebody else, make sure they really like wind chimes. And my recommendation is don't buy cheap wind chimes. They will drive you crazy very, very quickly because the sound is tinny. It's not melodic. But people who make really good wind chimes, I have a beautiful set of wind chimes that the sound to me is just delightful. This particular one, these are handmade in Virginia. It's uh, Wind River Chimes. They will put special 
um, they can engrave special things on them. So if you want it as a gift for an anniversary or a special event, uh, they can do that. And the other interesting thing is if you go on their website, you can listen to the sound because the different wind chimes make different sounds. Uh, Charleston Gardens is a place that's just one of many that you can get statuary. I have the windswept sun hanging in my garden and I just love him, I love his face. But you can find all different kinds of statuary from very expensive to inexpensive. I'm particularly fond of the bird girl of Savannah, but she's very expensive. Uh, this is another company and when I say, so like Charleston Gardens has other things besides the statuary and Gardener Supply Company has other things besides these. I wanted to show people that you can get attractive rain barrels. It doesn't have to be if you have a community that's um, very strict about the look. You can find ones that blend in with your community. They might, so the adobe looking one might look better in a community that has houses with the southwestern flare, this more traditional urn on the left hand side, and rain chains. I love rain chains and they come in every imaginable shape, size. It's just fun. When I was doing this presentation, I just had so much fun looking these things up. Plant stands. Anyone who has plants in their house at some time or other has needed a plant stand. Again, they come in every design imaginable, and they fit in almost any type of decor. And if you're me, then you have them all over the floor as well. Besides, So this is another um, gardening supply company, Plow and Hearth. Plow and Hearth started right here in Virginia in Madison. They still have a store. It's between, he, between here and Charlottesville. And it's a fun place to go browse around. They have wonderful arbors and trellises. I had a couple of their arbors at my other house here. I'm in a townhouse. Don't have room for all those lovely arbors. But it's, they, again, come in all shapes and sizes. So now moving on to books and games. Um, this section is going to be short because as a former librarian, I, I went down a rabbit hole. I had like... 20 or 30 slides on books and games and then realized, oops, I'm going to run into the 12th of next week. So I pared it down and we're considering doing a one that is just on books. So the Howard, if you want something with a laugh, but that has serious information in it, how carrots won the Trojan War is just plain fun. Curious but true stories about common vegetables. Read it before you plant your vegetable garden next spring. A garden logbook is an essential tool for a gardener. These are just random ones I found on Amazon, but they come in all sorts of shapes and colors and you use them to track your, track your planting dates, crop rotation, your successes and your failures. I know nobody has failures, but, and you can even draw sketches of your beds in them. Doug Ptolemy, I put him first because he is really at the forefront of trying to bring wildlife back, the birds, the insects, and these are essential books to understanding what is really needed to recreate our backyard, using our own backyards to create habitat for birds and insects. Nature's Best Hope, Bringing Nature Home, and his latest one, I think it's his latest, The Nature of Oaks. The Humane Gardener, Nancy Lawson, she actually, I believe, lives in the Washington area, she is an amazing gardener who transformed a very pedestrian, mundane um, suburban yard into an amazing wildlife habitat. Essential native trees and shrubs of the Eastern United States. Now this covers a wide swath. So again, you'd have to look for specific ones for your area. But I love this one in particular because of the diagrams. It shows how tall plants are going to get and how wide and has little diagrams showing a person. Uh, and so showing a comparison so you can have a better understanding of how big it's going to be when it's fully grown. And also the diagrams show at different stages. So how big will it be at five years, at 10 years, 20 years, so on. Finding the Mother Tree is one of my favorite books I've read lately. Suzanne Samarg 
is a scientist, but she started out as a forester in Canada, in British Columbia. And she was assigned to replant after the loggers had gone through, they were replanting trees. And she couldn't figure out why the trees weren't thriving. And so after delving into it, she discovered that they weren't thriving because trees need each other. And by clear cutting and then just sticking in seedlings, they didn't, these seedlings didn't have support of surrounding trees and they also needed diversity. The foresters thought that trees are competitive and that that competition would mean that the trees would not grow as well. And the exact opposite is true. Read her book, it's fascinating. Um, Gardening for a Lifetime, these are all books for people getting started or even somebody who's been gardening for a long time, but wants ideas on how they can keep gardening as you get a little arthritic and things get tougher for you. So this is Gardening for a Lifetime by Sydney Ediston, Lifelong Gardener, um, Tony Gatone, and Late Bloomer, Jan Couple of Bills. David Deardoff's books, What's Wrong with My Fruit Garden, Vegetable Garden, Plant, and House Plant are very handy guides to organic solutions for all types of plants. New Naturalism by Kelly Norris. Um, I heard him speak in International Master Gardeners and I was fascinated. His book is beautiful. And this is just for all those people who say, how can I get rid of my moss? Moss Gardening by Annie Martin. And don't forget the children in your life. I want to bring special attention to the one in the middle, Grandma Lisa's Humming, Buzzing, Chirping Garden. It's written by a master gardener. And it is, this is Doug Ptolemy for kids. This is how to turn your garden into a nature habitat and show children how the, the beauty of the garden. A couple of others in a garden by Tim McKenna, My Garden by Kevin Hanks, Planting a Rainbow. That one's really old, but it's still one of my favorites. And as a um, tribute to my grandmother, Cecily Mary Barker was an English artist and poet, and she wrote poems and she illustrated them with flower fairies. And there's in print, these came, I think, to the early 1900s. They're at least 100 years old. But the, you can still get the series Flower Fairies of the Spring, uh, Summer, Winter, Fall. Those are individual small books. Or you can get the complete Flower Fairies book. So for the children in your life, these are a few games that would make fun, a make fun gift. Uh, grow a garden matching game, a gathering a garden, a butterfly memory game. My personal favorite, the ladybug game, I've played this with my grandchildren too many times to count. It's a great deal of fun. Your ladybirds try to capture the aphids and fend off the praying mantis. So a, a great one for young kids. Now, visiting gardens. This is for those people that perhaps you want to give them a gift, but they don't need anything, They're, which is probably me. So these are gardens that are nearby. They do, most of them charge to visit. So you could make a gift of a visit, maybe take somebody or just give them the tickets to go themselves. Norfolk Botanical Garden in Norfolk, Virginia, closer to home. And Norfolk one has a beautiful children's garden as well as other beautiful areas. Um, Meadowlark Botanical Gardens in Vienna has the Winter Walk of Lights. It's going on right now. I think it goes on till early January, does require tickets. It's a timed thing, but it's beautiful any time of the year. Lewis Ginter in Richmond, one of my very, very favorites. This is the children's area, but it has a Japanese tea garden. So if you want to go and have tea in their tea garden, um, it has a greenhouse that has butterfly, has a butterfly area, uh, has orchids, it has everything. Brooklyn Gardens in Murrells Inlet, South Carolina, a bit further afield, but if you've never been there, I highly recommend it. Anna Huntington Hyatt was a sculptor in New York. She 
bought an old plantation in South Carolina. It was a rice plantation. And she transformed it into a sculpture garden. They have added to it over time. These particular pictures come from the children's garden, but it's one of my favorites. And also poetry. In some of the sections, they have poems inscribed on tablets around the, around the garden walls. Uh, going north, uh, for those of you who live in that direction, Mount Cuba Center, which uh, specializes in native plants. Uh, Longwood Gardens, which is in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. And they have absolutely fabulous um, decorations in the winter. But you can, again, anytime, and they do have fountain displays, uh, light shows in the summer. I think it goes through the summer. You can go to the website to check. And while you're there, stop in at Winterthur's Museum, Garden, and Library. In Moncton, Maryland is Ledoux Topiary Gardens. And then in Pennsylvania, um, Chanticleer Garden in Wayne, Pennsylvania is a very beautiful garden, has lots of different areas. Closer to us here in DC, the National Arboretum, the US Botanic Garden, and Blandy Experimental Farm, which is in Boyce, which is west of here. And I love taking my grandchildren there in the summer. There's great paths to wander. For a list, and again, I could do a whole presentation on public gardens. There is a website where you can put in wherever you live, and it will tell you the public gardens that are near you. And don't forget, if you're ever traveling abroad, to look up their gardens. Uh, check ahead of time what gardens are in the area. I know if you go up to the Toronto area, there's fabulous gardens there, there's fabulous gardens um, all in various places in Canada. One of my favorites is in British Columbia. Uh, it's very, it, gardens everywhere. So that's my presentation today. If you enjoyed this, let us know. You can send us questions and comments to mastergardener at pwcva.gov. There will be, we're going to be asking you to fill out a form uh, just a little quick couple of answers uh, that we use to evaluate our presentations and if you have suggestions for other classes and videos we always welcome those and if you want more information on lawns and gardens you can contact our extension horticultural help desk if you live in another state there is a cooperative extension in every state. You just need to check and see what university sponsors it and then where the local units are. But usually they are spread around the state. So there's usually something close to you. And this is a link to our website. Again, this was on, um, on the sheet that's going to be sent to you. So I now open it up to any questions that anybody has. Robin, I can't see the chat thing. Are you there? I'm reading through. I, I... Okay, got it. <laughs> this is Linda. There's, uh, there aren't any questions on the chat room right now. Okay. All right. Well, I, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And again, if you want to contact us, Master Gardener at pwcva.gov. You know, I, I think that's the wrong link. I didn't do this. Thomas did that slide. I think I sent to you the correct one. This is the future one. Ours is pwc.gov.org. This is the... There's no dot between PwC and GOV. It's mastergardener at pwcgov.org. I'll put it in there. Thanks, Christina. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I didn't oh, help us. <laughs> Thomas created the beginning and the end to make sure I, I said the right things at the beginning. And I did not notice that it was that other. This is going to be our, our future one. Yeah, we have a chance. To... Jan, that was fantastic. And we want to remind everybody that next Wednesday is our winter sewing zoom and you can register um either at the mass uh, help desk or on facebook we have some links and so, uh, maggie says not related but 
one minute, I just lost it. But perhaps interesting tonight, there is a program about bees on WETA that looks worth worthwhile at 930. Thank you, Maggie. Yes, thanks for that suggestion. And there are so many good programs out there. If you subscribe to um, various, you know, garden blogs and things, there'll be more, more of these than you can possibly have time to watch. And also, yes, um, if you're on Facebook, follow either our Master, Gar Master Gardener VCE Facebook page or the Teaching Garden, and you'll see all our upcoming events. And Harriet, do you want to tell us about the vegetable series that's coming up? Do you know, have the dates yet? I haven't started advertising, but I believe it comes in. Do you know, Jan, is it in February? I, it, it's, it's coming up. I don't think the dates are finalized don't yet. Have but if you go to our website, the ext.bt, mm -hmm. they don't yeah, have Hi, the everyone. Yet. This, is Har this is Harriet. The dates are not uh, finalized, but I think February will be the first month, and then we go from there. So, um, and then... And it will be via Zoom. Oh, it is great. And how many uh, sessions is it, Harriet? And what day of the week? I don't. I don't, don't know think... yet. We haven't. We haven't yet our first meeting on uh, finalizing it. But there are lots of different sessions, and of course, uh, we have um, added our entire program, which used to be face-to-face -face in various places all over the counties here, uh, libraries usually, uh, that's all online. So meanwhile, you, you can go online. We will make some, um, we will facilitate some, um, some changes and they will be, um, and they will be added, but we, we still need to talk about it. So, yeah, and it's going to be advertised. It'll, it'll yes. be advertised yeah. on our website. So yeah. I will put it on the website, and there will yeah. also be, if you're signed up for our PWC alerts, it, you'll get, um, as soon as everything is finalized, I'll send out an uh, alert on the PWC message board at, through Everbridge. I believe um, Bev Houston has her hand up. Yes. Did you have a question, Bev? Shush, Charlie, be quiet. I think she has to unmute. Mute. That the squirrel buster from Wild Bird Center. Uh, while, and I posted it on chat, but since I don't see my name on the uh, participants, I don't know if I posted or not, but it is a little expensive, but if you wanted to give an expensive gift to someone, that absolutely works to keep squirrels uh, your feeder. It is battery operated. Mine has lasted years. Uh, and then after, if it wears down, you can get a new battery, Wild Bird Center. Uh, and it's fun to watch because the squirrels will get on it and it just twirls them around and around and they jump or fall off. <laughs> Great fun. Works well. And wonderful okay. presentation, Jan. Thank you very, very much. I, I, will, I will try that. I will try that one. All of the ones I've tried, somehow or other, they have either chewed their way in or they've eventually. Okay. I've... <laughs> yeah, they've tried this, but they cannot. They've tried to get in through the top and they cannot. You can see their little claw marks, but they can't get in. So. Uh, can I add something? This is Harriet again, sorry. Uh, and I'm not showing my face here because I just washed, I washed my hair. I have <laughs> wet hair. <laughs> um, I have a squirrel, um, a deterrent feeder, and it really works. It's also not quite, um, quite cheap, uh, but it's not, not as expensive as someone mentioned. It's, it's still under a hundred dollars, but it is a manual one, and it's quite a large. It's it's a large feeder. What it does, the the little stations for the birds can only handle the regular birds, not a squirrel. When a squirrel goes in, everything goes down, and it closes the window. 
and the and you should see some of the surprise faces of those squirrels <laughs> and they try they try they have not been able to get in and get seats it's I'm, I'm going to tell you the reason why i always i decide to stick away so i had a squirrel proof feeder um quite a few years ago and i went out one morning to check it and i had a dead squirrel inside he got in but he couldn't get out oh, right. i was it that was my that was my swan song to squirrel proof feeders I was yeah. like, no. because and now these was, the, the feeder that I have uh, is not large enough so a yeah. squirrel could get in, uh, yeah. but it will not allow access to the squirrel to the hole to get the seeds. Yeah. I, I, I'm i glad to know that there's been improvements made over the yeah. years, and there are some. And I, I will freely admit that I, I take feeding the squirrels as part of the, oh, well. <laughs> Oh, I have too many nuts. <laughs> so Laurel has raised her hand. Do you want to, I'll unmute her. There you go. Yeah. Hi, this is Laurel. Jan sounds like she has everything, but I was just kind of curious if someone was to give you a gardening gift, um, what would you get excited about? And it can't be like a Hart, Hartley uh, greenhouse or anything like that. It's something small scale. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Um, see, I don't, I, I don't know that there's any one thing. I mean, when I was thinking about this, I, I thought there's so many things. I, I have um, coasters that have birds and flowers on them. I have, um, I have gorgeous prints on my walls. So there, I don't think there's any one thing. Um, it, it so depends on the person and what that person likes. Do they like to read? Then, you know, I might pick Suzanne Samard's book or one of Doug Tallamy's books. If they're more a, um, a person who needs the indoor gardening. And, you know, I'm so sorry that when my mother-in-law was, she was a wonderful gardener. And when she got frail, that, I didn't think to do something like that. I don't remember now whether that was even available. But so that's what I mean. It's so tailored to who that person is. What does that person love? I don't know that there's any one thing. And that's and that's not that's evading the question, I know. Well, Doug Ptolemy's books are always yeah. a good gift. I love my cobra head weeder. I mean, honestly, I can't live without it. Yeah. And so does every person at the teaching garden. They are so many, and people are always going, is this my cobra? Is this your cobra? That was a great idea. I'm going to put tape on mine. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. Um, I just finished a book. Um, you know, you mentioned children's books, and, of course, we were probably all raised on The Secret Garden, which is just, I love that book. But um, there's a, the book I'm reading came out this year, called Unearthing the Secret Garden um, by Martha McDowell. And she talks about the subtitles, the plants and places that inspired Frances Burnett, who wrote The Secret Garden. And um, I'm, it's, it's, I'm just finishing up today this library book, and it, I really in, um, enjoyed immersing myself into that author's life. So just F FYI for all you guys. Great. Thank you. That's, that'll be a great addition to our book one, if, if that one comes to be. I've written it down. Thank you. Do you see my hand? Yes. <laughs> it's Beverly. I didn't know if I was still, if it's still shown. I just wanted to ask, this might be a good forum for this. I have six million nuts in my backyard area. And at one time I read where a, an organization was looking for nuts to test something. Uh, one year, I had 10 pails. I took a picture. It sounds astounding, but I had 10 pails, various sizes. But I have all kinds of nuts, more than the squirrels could eat in a million years. So does anyone know of an organization that was doing that? Because I cannot remember 
who I think it was the wasn't it the Department of Forestry they wanted to re um, repopulate redo trees and they were interested in having local ecotypes. Yeah. I, I, County. I don't know if it was them, but I know that I, I remember that as well. So yes. every, I'm sorry. Every year, uh, DOF um, collects uh, acorns and nuts from local folks and uses those to plant their nurseries. Um, mm -hmm. So you might want to contact the Department of Forestry office in Warrington and see if they can okay. help that out. Mm -hmm. Your okay. second option is if you know anybody who raises hogs locally, hog yes. farmers yes. love I do. To, to feed acorns and nuts. Uh, yes, I just took probably 17 pumpkins out there Sunday, well, to a neighbor who has a pig farm. Well, that's interesting, and they do that. I'll call them both. Yeah, thank you. Could you hear? Could well, I guess you heard me all right? Yeah, we could hear. Okay, that. all right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, that was fantastic, Jan. Thank you. I I had some great ideas, especially the books for me. <laughs> and the wind. There's so many more books. I I I had. I cut out 10 slides worth of books, and I could have kept going. And that it was when I realized that I was getting over the top that I had to say, you know, this maybe needs its own. Well, thanks for the wind chime suggestions, because I sent that to my husband as soon as you mentioned it, <laughs> that website. And it Cher was fun says, listening to the different sounds. <laughs> yeah, Cher says share the book slides via um, email if you get a chance. Um, I, the titles from those slides that I didn't include are in the list that I sent. Thank you. Did you get that, Cher? Did you get the email? I've already gotten it. Uh, Christina sent it. Yes, thank you, she said. And thank you, Christina, for sending that out so quickly. Wonderful job, Jan. Yes, thank you. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Bye. You. Happy holidays. Thank you, thank Thanks, you Jan. Jan. It's wonderful. Great job, Jan. Bye-bye. Bye. Excellent, excellent, Jan.